human trafficking is a crisis, but one TV show is aiming to make a difference. Let's talk about it with that show's creator, Nicole Abyssinio, on Steve Brown, etc. He's an old white guy, an author, broadcaster, and seminary professor who's sick of religion. And he's brought friends. Please welcome Sarah. And this is Steve Brown, etc. I am Matthew Porter, your humble guest host. Have no fear. Uh, Steve is away this week, but he will be back uh, next week. Jinx also away this week. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he asked permission for that, but uh, don't know what he's up to. Not getting a haircut. That much I'm sure of. You think somebody's trying to tell you something, Matthew? Yeah, is it me? Is it <laughs> do I offend? No, we purposely didn't let Steve come because this would not be a good a good program with Steve. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. This, no, this is yeah, this no. is entertainment world, man. I, I, I might have a narrow lane, but it is a lane, so <laughs> our video director and one man IT department, Mr. John Myers, is in his tech bunker and just on the off chance. Uh, you guys were not feeling old. Uh, John reminds you that the original iPhone was introduced 16 years ago this week. So, oh my! Enjoy that little that little tidbit there, wow. Dr. George Bingham. He is the president of Key Life, and like the original iPhone, George sometimes has a limited memory. Yeah. <laughs> no judge. Been around a long time. <laughs> <gasps> Oh, oh, we can. Matthew, kid. Matthew. We kid. <laughs> hey, day's coming up, son. What yeah, are you thinking? Right, right. What is What's this, happening? a roast? What's going on? <laughs> Kathy Wyatt is, of course, the soft feminine side of the program. And Kathy's favorite Apple product is the iPhone. <laughs> you guys thought I'm going to make a little baking joke and you're going to groan. and But I didn't. I did not do that. And that's a little something called self-control. <laughs> ah, See? for a change. Well done. We're growing. <laughs> I'm growing. Yeah. Guys, I could not be more stoked for today's show. You have dialed into the right one. Our guest is Nicole Abyssinio. Nicole is an actress. She's a writer, director, a casting director, and producer. She began in the world of investment management while also working as an actress. Her varied career has taken her around the world, including the red carpet in Con, Can, Canis. I'll never get it right. Can, <laughs> Can, and you receiving, can, Matthew. You can. I, yes, yes, I can. <laughs> ah, take two. Uh, and listen to this. She received a was literally handed a best feature film award by Mr. John Travolta. <gasps> yeah. Oh my. You know how it is, rocking and rolling and whatnot. <laughs> there it is. Wow. <laughs> More recently, Nicole launched her nonprofit ministry, Gabriel's Messenger Ministries. Her latest project is called The Advocate. It's a new TV series now streaming on Sony's Pure Flix platform. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, so you've got this hit show. It 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 debuted right before Christmas. And I want to I want to talk all about it. But I got to start here. We got to go backstory, right? We got to go a little bit because your backstory is way more interesting than most of our, our folks. Tell us a little bit about your background, investment management, just, just that. What? Yeah, what's that about? What in the world? <laughs> no one ever asked me about that. That's so funny. <laughs> well, listen, I, listen, the first, we I were, put him up to it. We were introduced <laughs> through a, a, a mutual friend. And when the first time we talked on the phone, you told me a little bit about that part. And anytime I come into a conversation, I don't want to like show off, but I'd like to kind of represent myself as a smart person. And, you know, and there's a little voice that said, you know what, bud, you can just sit this one out. It's all right. <laughs> it's OK. Just just take a breather here. So you're too kind. Enlighten us. Um. Well, I had gotten 
So uh, usually people ask me about my personal backstory. So this is actually kind of exciting and interesting. Um, I got to go to college um, at 16 and and finish there. And I got a full scholarship to college because we didn't have, you know, our family didn't have money. So I was always working towards being able to get a, an academic scholarship. But I always cared about theater. I always cared about film. That's all I ever wanted to do. But I felt like I couldn't just go for the arts. <laughs> I felt that I needed to do something. So I I got into economics. That was, I did a double degree, but I fell into investment management in college when I was looking for an internship. And I worked with this company that was, um, they had come from New York city, big money managers. And, you know, they kind of just trained me up, but they were really excited that I was in film, which was interesting because I ended up staying there for a number of years because they would let me leave for months to go do a movie or go do a show or go do whatever. And they would just leave my work on my desk. Mm. And I was like, this is a great deal. I mean, of course, I ended up in full time film eventually. But yeah, it was it was a very amazing story how that happened. I just really am kind of a numbers nerd. I like sitting in the back office and working with at that time it was Bloomberg. So you had the big Bloomberg monitors and wow. Um, yeah. And they forced me to day trade and stuff, but back then it was hedge fund time. So it was all about the hedge funds then. That Col- college at six, college at 16. <laughs> of course you got a scholarship. That's good amazing. grief. Who goes uh, to college at 16, except brainiacs. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's well, awesome. I, I mean, I guess I was smart enough to get out of high school. You know what I mean? Like I just wanted <laughs> to be away from a place. Well, I was always kind of a free thinker. So I, when I'm in high school, I'm like, why do I have to ask to go to the bathroom? That just seems abnormal to me. <laughs> you know, like I need to be somewhere where I can just go when I need to go. <laughs> we got an independent thinker over here. Alert, Uh-oh. alert. <laughs> Roll me a troublemaker. Out. Roll me out of the studio. I love it. Most actresses will be waiting tables. Your hedge fund management, just a you know, <laughs> bravo. Well, a little better part time job. Yeah. Well, and hold on, thankfully, because when I, I I think first in high school, I tried to wait on tables. I was the worst waitress of all. Time. <laughs> Horrible at it. I mean, no one would ever hire me to do that job. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So you 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 bust out of school quick. You're you're in both worlds, total left brain, right brain, but then the entertainment stuff starts kind of taking a little bit more traction. Tell us about how that kind of evolved. Sure. Well, back then I was I was not a conservative and I was not Christian. I was neither of those. Um, I was living in New York City. And um, it just I I didn't even I was an actress, you know, I'm an actress in New York, but it just seemed weird because of the left brain and the right brain, like neither one were quite a fit. Mm -hmm. And I was literally at my seventh Sopranos audition, but I was very pro women. So I was very upset that I had to keep going in for this show where I felt like they were degrading towards women. So I get into the elevator and I keep doing well enough in this audition, but bad enough that I don't get the part. Like I keep trying to walk the line that they'll call me back for other things, but not hire me for this awful (laughs) female roles. So I get in the elevator with this guy and I guess he's their like accountant or whatever. And he starts talking to me and he goes, wow, like you're not just an act like you, you something, something ridiculous, like, Oh, you actually like have a brain or something. It was awful. (laughs) Um, But he said, did you ever think of doing crew or behind the scenes? It had never crossed my mind. Wow. And he was doing showtime at the Apollo at that time. He was doing all the like production and accounting and asked if I would come into the office. So that was my first taste of production, literally on an elevator trip, uh, you know, in a random New York city building. I mean, that's the way it it happens really. But, um, but at that point I just kept acting and I kept, um, you know, I was doing the production as well, but what was happening to me on sets was a lot of the, you know, Hey, we'll give you the lead role in this movie, you know, for casting couch opportunities. And I, that was never anything for me. Mm -hmm. And I just kept getting angrier and angrier. And one day after a Robert De Niro movie I was on, it wasn't Robert De Niro. It was the producer of this Robert De Niro movie that had asked me, it was very much like me too movement. He had asked me something and I was so hurt. And so I was crying and I was so angry and I went home and I said, what does that guy do? Oh, he's a producer. And I said, I'm going to do that. 
Like that's mm. going to be my job. I didn't even know what that meant. And the next day I started a production company and, you know, it just went from there. And and that's more of a, a lateral move than people might realize as far as being very adept at finances and money and the producing part, because for all the flashy glitz and glamour, I mean, producing is a lot of in the trenches, solving problems, making the budget stretch further than it wants to uh, kind of stuff. It, it really is. And so what was amazing is that, you know, everything is kind of ordained and it's it's all part of the plan along the way. I mean, back to that whole economics thing, I had also had a car accident um, right when I had started college. So I was also not able to really walk much at that time. So I was thinking I wasn't going to be able to be performing or I wasn't going to be able to be in film. So but that degree ended up saving me because people took me seriously because I had already been managing hundreds of millions of dollars. Otherwise, if I had been a performer and started production, it would not have turned out. I mean, it may have, but it, it probably would have been a lot harder. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every actor had, I want to direct, I want to DJ, I want to, which is great, which is great, but you're, you're coming at it from a whole different uh, degree and bringing a lot more credibility to it. Uh, our guest is Nicole Abyssinio. Her show is called The Advocate. It is currently streaming on Pure Flix. You got to check that out. When we come back, we are going to learn about what the show is all about. Also, would love to get into a little bit more of Nicole's story to find out how did she go from being this working actress slash day trader, not day trader, <laughs> but financial genius. How did she meet Jesus? How did we make how did we make this connection? You're listening to Steve Brown, etc. And uh, we're going to be on the other side of this. Have so much more ahead to uh, to talk about with Nicole. Please do not go anywhere, and we will be right back. Steve Brown, etc. As has been pointed out with Steve Away, it's just etc. Today we are talking to actress, writer, director, casting director, and producer and Nicole Abyssinio. Her new TV series is called The Advocate, and it is currently streaming on Pure Flix. So, any kind of story, critical part early on is when our main characters meet. And so I want to know about how the character named Nicole meets the character named Jesus. <laughs> how did this happen? Um, it's really, truly an incredible story and multiple things were happening at the same time. But I was getting to where I was finally, I would say, like you're arriving in the business where you're starting to get job, you're working, you're paying your bills at this. Like, it's very exciting time. We had just done a movie. We're going to Cannes Film Festival can <laughs> i'm writing this down nicole i actually Eric. called it con too for a really long time so i'm glad I, I got that but um but i'm in france on the red carpet in this handmade gown with like you know everything that they do everything that you know as you're growing up you're dreaming you know you're going to be able to walk this red carpet and the whole world is outside and there's all these gates you know blocking us in and photography just looks supposed to be this amazing moment right and it was the exact opposite and I had never felt so empty or so unhappy or so unfulfilled in my entire life. And I had this just, it was like the Holy Spirit came upon me. And it was literally this out of body experience that understanding all of a sudden that the world had lied to me and that everything that they had told me was going to make me happy, you know, be successful, be this, you know, look like that, all the things that I followed and did were the opposite effect to me where there was nothing left of me. And I literally have chills right now talking about it. And I still have that picture of me on the red carpet, which I'll never forget. Um, it was a Woody Allen premiere, which is also really funny because God can come to you anywhere. And I remember <laughs> I <laughs> Right? <Yeah. laughs> um, 
So I remember I went to excuse myself to the restaurant. I was by myself. I was with strangers because none of the people that I was with could actually get in because they weren't quote unquote special enough. They had to have like specific points. It's a point system. It's like the oh. Gestapo. It really is an interesting <laughs> system there. Um, but when I looked in the mirror, there was literally, it was terrifying. There was no one staring back at me. Oh. And I, I think God saved me just in time because it was like, I had already already, I was selling out so much on so many things. Um, thankfully not on some of the, the larger things that would have really maybe like come back at me in in different ways. I mean, everything does in a, in a sense, but he, he got me just in time, hmm. just in time. And I remember it was like a movie because I'm running out of France in this gown and I'm like, I have to get out of this country. And I tell everybody I need to find a church and everyone's like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nicole. <laughs> so, and then, and then it was amazing, the opposition, because I remember being at the airport and like all flights got shut down. It was crazy. Like I couldn't, and I'm crying to the lady, no, you don't understand. Like I have to find a church because I don't understand there could be one in France. <laughs> <laughs> they have a famous one. I don't know. <laughs> no, no comprehension of this at all. Thinking that I need to like go to the United States. Um, so, and, and that was the beginning of just the most beautiful, beautiful journey with with Christ. A long, wow. amazing, eventful journey. You know, because then, then, then the journey really begins because it's like you go in. You know, you start listening to the Word. You don't even really know what sin is, and you can't believe certain things are even sins and. It's just, it's just a journey. Um, but I do think that when, when you start to go in the right direction, uh, I wish they would teach earlier. Cause I, this is where it was a big struggle for me. They, they didn't say, Hey, the enemy is going to come after you now because he doesn't, he had you and he's does, he's not going to go out without a fight. And we had a literal fight to the death. I almost died. And, um, yeah. And it, and it went from there, but it, it was transformational changed my life. I got rid of all my shares and all my Hollywood movies that I had made at this point, horror movies, movies with cursing things that I didn't realize that I was hurting God with. Mm -hmm. And he really showed me that I wasn't using my gifts for him. I was using them for myself, for the world, for the, for Satan really. And, um, then I was working for him after that. So it's been a good ride. Ah, love it. Yeah. Nicole, um, can you explain, or would you, I know you can, obviously, would you explain to us a little bit about um, the premise of the advocate? And um, my understanding is that it is um, was inspired by some true events. And so can you just, um, for those of us that are, you know, that haven't had, or those that are listening, I should say, who haven't had the opportunity, and maybe this will give them, obviously, make them do some investigation so that they can find it. Would you, can you explain a little bit about that to us? And and if we end up running into a break, we can finish on the other side. So don't worry about it. Sure, absolutely. The Advocate um, drama TV series is basically about a child protective agent who um, in the pilot episode, she actually goes after a boy who jumps off a bridge and she falls into the water. And when she comes out, she has Holy Spirit gifts. And at that point, she's able, because she has these supernatural gifts to get ahead of the predators through dreams, visions, discernment of spirits, all these wonderful things. Um, so the show is two parts. There's the supernatural elements to it um, of that. I really wanted to wake up the body of Christ um, and really get them to like the Bible is real. It is true. Like these are the things that are possible. Um, and then the other half of it is what was so crucial to me. And I, I think it's my long term calling forever is to fight human trafficking and fight child abuse, but really to protect all of, you know, the most vulnerable. We even have an episode that's protecting dogs, one that protects elderly. I mean, um, but our main focus is to to fight predators and trafficking through every means, you know, every, every aspect of that, whether it's, um, you know, social media predators, trafficking, where they grab you from a van that you see in the movies, but also even the more subtle kinds where, you know, uh, people that were abused end up getting manipulated into, you know, prostitution, which is really trafficking, you know, or being held in violence against their will. 
um, mm-hmm. or in the grooming process also. So there's some amazing things. We made a family friendly show. We have children watching this show, which is just so incredible. Um, we spent a year with human trafficking units, with SVU units, with uh, NGOs, just basically um, getting all these true stories and then compiling them together. But a lot of the supernatural elements are true too from our um, our my ministry side of things of the spiritual warfare and deliverance ministry. So it's all kind of blended into, into one. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. It's yeah. it's it's a very relevant topic, and you have paired a, a very pressing social issue with um, compelling storytelling and great execution. And we're talking to Nicole Abyssinio. Her show is called The Advocate. It is currently streaming on Pure Flix. Be sure to go check that out, pureflix.com. Still so much more to talk about. I want to talk about kind of behind the scenes, how that went, and uh, learn a little bit more about the ministry that Nicole... Uh, just mentioned. And again, she did so many things on this. She wrote it, directed it, produced it. She was also the craft services. She handled grip and electric. She did hair and makeup. She did the choreography. She was the stunt coordinator, a horse wrangler. I think she was a PA. for joining us on Steve Brown, etc. We are hanging out with Nicole Abyssinio. Her new TV series is called The Advocate. It is currently streaming on Pure Flix. Go to pureflix.com. Also stop by the advocatetvseries.com. We're going to get to more questions, but for somebody who's not familiar, Nicole, Pure Flix, what is a Pure Flix? Pure Flix is a streaming site like anything else, um, but it's I call it the clean Netflix because mm. everything on there is, you know, clean or more family friendly. Um, so I really love everything that they have there. And it, it, you can get it on your television. You can download it on Roku. You can download the app, you know, on any of your devices or you can go to pureflix.com. But I just I love seeing it on the big screen, you know. Yeah. And their content has grown. Their library has grown so much over the last couple of years. And, uh, and I, I, I want to say it was last year. I don't even remember. They were acquired by Sony. So this is this is legit entertainment. So be sure to check that out. Yeah, they're doing an amazing job. Their platform from like everything looks incredible. We're very nice. thankful to be there. Nicole, in, a, in addition to a, a compelling story, uh, compelling plot line, and um, you um, what you have some goals for this series. I mean, you obviously have some passions. You talk about human trafficking. You actually um, are doing some teaching uh, almost in in the series. Can you talk sort of about your goals there and what you're trying to accomplish? Sure. I mean, of course, we wanted to make, you know, a beautifully entertaining show, but, you know, we always want to give great uh, information along the way. And so we did. We we really wanted to empower families um, and children, teens, young adults, um, women, just in general, you know, um, fathers and how to protect their their children. Um, and so we've got safety tips in each episode, like the social media episode, for example. One thing that was a running theme with the SVU units was that um Snapchat has a tracking app on it that um, is so precise that it actually anybody on your that's like in your group that's a follower of yours can track you down to the room, the precise room that you're in in your house. And so I felt like a lot, I didn't know that a lot of people didn't know that. And that needs to be turned off. If that's not turned off, anybody that gets on your page or your friend's page, I mean, your children's page is just, I mean, that's terrifying to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just working that into the show is a normal part of, you know, one of our true stories in the storyline, but there's so many more that we use, um, you know, in the first episode, which is actually my true 
story when I was eight years old, when I was, you know, by the grace of God that he was working in my life, able to bring down a predator at eight years old that was using my friend and like a hundred other kids. And, um, you know, one of the things, the reason why I wasn't abused and I was able to do that was because I, my mom was a child abuse investigator at the time. And she was, uh, like had trained me up, you know, she had taught me. So I knew things to look for at a very young age and it actually ended up saving me. And so I'm, I'm really hoping that that will help a lot of people. Hmm. And the month we're in January is national human trafficking prevention month. And obviously, as we've talked about, it's not the only subject that you uh, cover in the series, but it's a very important one and a very compelling one. Um, you know, there's there's a word that has come up really in the it's 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 a word that has existed before, but our understanding of it in the last, I'd say, 12 months, has just kind of uh, reached a different level of, of grooming. And you talk about that in the show. Could you just give us a, a top level view of, of what that process is and how that factors into this human trafficking industry? Sure. And I think and and the, these are actually the lines in the show where it's not like taken, guys. You know, right. everybody thinks, you know, you're just walking down the street and you just get grabbed, which can absolutely happen. I mean, right. we've seen plenty of those cases, but more often than not, it's someone befriending you, you know, it's someone trying to date you. That's a boyfriend that's trying to gain your trust. That's then going to like bring you into this world. It can be a woman. I mean, we're, we're finding out, we're seeing that so often now that the men usually bring in a woman because girls trust women more, you know, um, trying to befriend you. Oh, come to this party. Oh, you know, I've got some friends. We're doing this thing. There's so many different ways. It could be a family member, a neighbor, a coach, a teacher. Um, and predators in general, they look for places where they can be predators for who they're looking for, you know. Um, and so sharing those stories is very important and being aware of what that person's intentions are. Mm. You know, you can't assume, unfortunately, you, you have to and not in a scary way, not in a way of being afraid. But I think it's very important. Like, who is this person that I'm talking to online? Are they really who they say they are? How are they going to prove it? Are they, you know, giving me uh, a video to show who they are with the name on? I mean, there's so many ways that people can get to you now. And and this is stuff that parents, it's really incumbent upon them to be smart about things that are going on up to up to speed, wise as a serpent, innocent as a dove. And it evolves all the time. But um, eventually you're going to train your kids up to be wary and smart, but it's on you to protect them until they get to that young adult level where they can make some of those decisions themselves. Yeah. Right. And some of that, you know, prevention and awareness, that's the point, you know, we want to stop this before it happens. Right. Mm. Powerful stuff. It's handled so adeptly in, uh, in, in, in the series. Um, I, I have to say the the way that it was handled in, in the first episode, it's unnerving, but it was very subtly done. But it really, it, the tone of it, you're like, right, this is an insidious evil. And uh, it was handled really well, almost kind of a um, law and order kind of feel to a certain vibe as far as a procedural. So if you like those kind of shows, you like stuff based on uh, real life events, it's also encouraging and uplifting and educational. You're going to love The Advocate. It's on Pure Flix. We're talking to its creator right now, Nicole Abyssinio. We will be right back. Thank you for hanging out with us. By the way, if you're listening to us on the radio or online, thank you. But did you also know there's a YouTube version of this show? Check that out at youtube.com slash Key Life Network. And while you're there, you've made the trip anyway. Why not just go ahead and click subscribe? Just do it. It's okay. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. We are talking with multi-hyphenate Nicole Abyssinio. She has created a Fantastic new TV series that is on Pure Flix right now. It's called The Advocate. And uh, got to check that out. Right before the break, I'd mentioned the tone of being kind of like law and order. 
further clarification would be the initial episode is 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 has that kind of tone that kind of procedural kind of vibe but it you know, as as any season does, the stories evolve and everything kind of moves from there. So, yeah, I mean, tell us just a little bit. I mean, don't give anything away, but it arcs. It it really does. I mean, it's really about Amber's story, you know, about her life. And, you know, she was adopted and, um, you know, her mom had had cancer. It's just a beautiful story of how she became what her calling is Mm. and they knew her calling. And then her partner, detective Chuck Coleman, he's fantastic. And he's a widow and uh, his daughter is just so amazing. She's going through her preteen years. And so I thought it was really important to, you know, really show the backstories like they're out fighting crime, but a lot of those shows, they don't show, you know, the families and what's going on there and like their normal life and even their volunteer work. We show, you know, their time at the farm with the horses and there's just lots of Cool stuff going on in the show. We have a 63 person cast um, with guest stars, amazing guest stars coming in. But yeah, my co star, they <laughs> yesterday we did an interview and they were like, that guy's been doing push ups since he was two, <laughs> 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 which is, which is fairly true. Um, but you know what? He plays Detective Chuck Coleman, but he he's just such a humble guy. And he and I were both last minute replacements on the show. Oh, is that right? That was not the plan for you to be the. No. No. All right. Not at well, all. Huh. Yeah, oh. I know. I feel like I probably should have dropped this bomb earlier. Yes. <laughs> yes. A, a little intriguing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were we were both literal last minute, last second replacements and you know, you look at the show and it tested so high even before it came out for our characters and we thought, "Oh, thank goodness." Because we really were completely on the fly. I mean, thankfully I wrote it because I found out at one in the morning that I was playing this role when we started shooting at six in the morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Lucky you were the writer. Wow. <laughs> God, wait. It was right. It was incredible. But I, I think I was probably, you know, born to play the, like it was all, it was all ordained. I mean, that was the whole point is that the Chris Lindsay who plays that role, it couldn't have been anyone else. I mean, you watch it and we had done a nationwide search and we couldn't find the right person. Like it wasn't ever quite a fit. And he is that he is that character, you know, Hmm. that is fantastic. Tell us a little bit about um, about the writing process, because, uh, you know, you think about a film, you know, 90, 120 minutes, but a TV series, you add up all the minutes. This is a lot of story that you're covering. You've got A stories, you've got B stories, you've got little little light moments. It's a lot of orchestration that goes into it. Uh, how did that process unfold for you? Um, you know, I first of all, the idea came from um, a, a gentleman, Jim Coleman, that I had worked with for 20 years in the industry. Um, and he had this idea back in like, it was like 2006 or something. And I said, the world's not ready for that yet. Mm. It was just supernatural gifts because he wasn't Christian at the time either. Oh, no kidding. And he wow. is now. It, it's it's just been such an interesting thing. But I went back to him and I said, I want to make this show now. We just had that just that general idea and premise. But now we knew, no, it has to be all Holy Spirit gifts. It can't be any of this like psychic, right? Exactly what it normally is. Um, So the process for writing is really not me writing is please God, get me out of the way of myself and let the Holy Spirit write this because it says in the Bible that he will give us the words that the Holy Spirit to just, just let him speak through you. And so I really see myself more as a court stenographer that's literally just trying to catch up with what's coming out. And, you know, that's what needs to be said. I don't want to get in the way of it. I don't want to mess it up. As soon as I start to write something or going right, like, it's not going to be right. It's not going to be what he, he knows what everyone wants and needs and he cares about each person. He knows who's going to watch it. He knows everything. And so really falling under that plan. But I wasn't supposed to write it either. Mm, that's what you, that's I, what we you hired a writer. <laughs> I was just supposed to produce this. And we hired a writer and it was sent it to the studio. Before we were with Pureflix, we were originally with another development studio. And they did not like that. They loved the idea. They didn't like the pilot episode that this person wrote. Wow. And I didn't want to lose the deal. I said, just hold on. Give us one more chance. Like, w- let me just write something. And that's how. Then they loved it. And it was that was how that was born. 
Hmm. Wow. And, and off air, we were talking about, again, it just, it just went live, uh, what Christmas Eve day. And then, so, which is not necessarily the the best line. I mean, people are busy with other stuff, yeah. but tell us kind of a little bit about the reaction that you're already getting from folks on, on the series. <laughs> Oh, we literally, it, God literally just blew it out of the water. It was supposed to come out in January for human trafficking month, the studio oh. and called and they were like, Hey, how do you feel about, you know, putting it out for Christmas? And I was like, well, it doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. It's not really a Christmas. I thought the same thing. People literally said, don't do it. It's death. It has risen to the top of the charts. It has been nonstop, just beloved watched. It, it's literally trending. I mean, it's incredible what God did with it. And I thought I do want to put out for Christmas because maybe one or two people are, you know, having a tough time over the holidays are hard. Maybe they're, you know, feeling depressed or sad, you know, and this will uplift them. And it ended up being, I can't say how many people, but a lot Lots and lots and enormous amounts of people. That's great. Well, we're, they got it, all of it. Yeah. Well, clock is winding down. I, any? Can you give us any uh, any little teasers on what's in the works for next for you? Is there a season two? Do you have a musical coming out? Are you? <laughs> I assume that you're grinding glass for the lenses now. You just do everything else. <laughs> we have we have a great crew. I'm very thankful for the, the grips and electric um, and all of our wonderful crew. Um, I'm, yeah, we're definitely talking about season two. I think season two is going to be 2023. I feel like it's ordained, but um, I've been working on a daddy daughter, amazing movie. Uh, the script just got done. It's a true story about a little girl with Luca district. It's just the most beautiful a uh, story about redemptive suffering. And then um, I've got a new movie coming out with Lionsgate. Uh, uh, it's called Radar, Adventures of the Bionic Dog. Just a fun little <laughs> family movie. So that's coming out in April. That's fantastic. That's I've been great. seeing stuff about that in the trades and uh, congrats on all the projects. Please don't be a stranger whenever uh, you got something or even just to say hello. Um, 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 hope will be one of your regular stops, Nicole. We would love that. For sure. We are talking to Nicole Avicenio, a multi-talented woman, very inspirational, somebody who just goes and gets things done, but not just going and getting things done, listening to God, allowing herself to be used by God in powerful ways. Her TV series is now streaming on Pure Flix. You got to check it out. It's called The Advocate. Fantastic show. We do have one more segment. Do not miss that. We will be right back. us here on Steve Brown, et cetera. Hey, and uh, since you're here, can I ask you a question? Do you get our email? It's called Key Life Connection. And every week we just cram that thing full of the best videos and podcasts and shows and articles and everything we have at Key Life. And every now and then uh, we give our subscribers early access to some of our stuff. We're doing that this week. <laughs> While you're thinking about it, go to keylife.org slash subscribe to uh, to give that a try. Uh, fantastic conversation with Nicole. Such an impressive person. Um, in, in, in talking to her, I cannot help but think, and she even kind of alluded to this, uh, Ephesians 4, 1 Corinthians 12, where it talks about God giving us different gifts, different abilities in order to... Uh, equip us for good works to build up the body. Um, you know, that whole idea that our, our different giftings are kind of like us being different parts of the body where we have different roles and yet it's kind of all coordinated and orchestrated together in this big, beautiful way. Um, but how that happens, it's not always clear. I mean, just for example, flashback to where she's and Nicole is like acting and 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 interested in money stuff. 
uh, like how would that one day somehow have any impact on a massive humanitarian crisis? And yet here we are <laughs> talking about that very thing. So it makes me think, well, what's our part in this? And to me, it's not, we just have to show up, just show up. We have to take risks. We have to be engaged in the work that we've been given. I always think about Peter and that's a dude who made some wrong choices and some wrong moves, but he did make moves. Uh, when I think of Peter, I think of the phrase, uh, it's hard to part. It's hard to steer a parked car. Uh, <laughs> at least that dude was in motion. And I think if we show up with our gifts, ready to serve and not be served, I'm pretty confident that God, who is the director of directors, will direct our paths. So great show. Thank you guys for all hanging out for that. Kathy, please enlighten us. Who will be the next lucky guest for this national radio show? Next week, Brant Hansen will be with us. And um, Brant has. Dude. Yeah. Uh, he's just, they have just re released his book that he wrote a number of years ago, Unoffendable, but it's got a couple new chapters. It's got a workbook with it, study guide with it. And he's just really a way, way fun person to talk to. He, he really is so funny, so humble, so winsome. Yes. And you know, you've arrived as an author when you're sitting down to write your next book and they're like, listen, dude, why don't we just release the old one again? <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, exactly. That's so much easier. Guys. Thank you sincerely so much for hanging out. Please join us next week. And as always, until then, remember, be safe, stay dangerous.